All right, everybody, welcome back to the Surfside Recovery Podcast. I'm your handsome host, Brian Licata. Handsome is debatable. Handsome is debatable. My dad thought that was funny. We listened to one on the way back from Florida, and he just started cr- cracking up. Um, that's, you know, the Grand Poobah, Ian Koch over there. And today we're talking about a topic that I know absolutely nothing about, so I'm preparing to be enlightened. What is that topic, sir? He doesn't even know. Trauma and addiction treatment or... Well, so, so this has come up a bunch recently. Um, more and more treatment centers are opening. Mm-hmm. They're trying to differentiate themselves. They're not doing a very good job of it. So a lot of them will have like different tracks, right? like a young adult track, a old age track. Kind a, of like your rehab major. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> like a rehab, Yes. <laughs> you like that one, right? Yes, I very just, much. I just thought of that. I very, very much like that. Yes, a rehab major. Um, and right now, in terms of like mental health, trauma is the new like cool thing to have. It's like the buzz, the buzzword, yeah, kind of. Yeah, like years ago it was ADD, and then it was like bipolar for a while, and um, now it's trauma. Right. And uh, is trauma real? Absolutely. But the problem with doing trauma therapy and addiction treatment is that you're opening up a can of worms. So, so like, think about it this way. Like, let's say, let's say we're talking about a woman who was potentially raped and now she's in treatment, mm-hmm. right? Hot off drugs, like fresh off drugs. And now her therapist is like discussing her trauma. Okay. So she's now become incredibly vulnerable. Right, she's potentially because she's honest. bringing back up all those yeah bringing feelings about the that tr- stuff yeah, right. uh, and she's not getting high, so she can't numb that. Mm-hmm. And then the case manager calls her in the office fourteen days later and says, "Oh, by the way, your insurance has cut you off. You need to go home." Mm-hmm. And we wonder why people relapse. I mean, think about it. She's become exposed to. Like her weakness. Now, the first thing I think about when you start talking about this, would something like this, in your opinion, be better suited to discuss once they get out? Like, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it should it, be discussed. Let's be clear. It should but, be dealt but with. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not at that time, because right. like the, the the thing that I've always benefited from, benefited from with inpatient treatment is the stabilization period, where it gets me away from whatever neighborhood of whatever city I'm in, wherever I'm getting high at. And it physically removed me from that location. I have a friend who operates a very big facility and he consistently says, like, we are nothing more than stabilization. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, the therapists on the front line and see part of the issue is that. Right. Like there's so many treatment centers opening that we can't get nuts. We can't get enough qualified therapists. Right. We talked about that in a, Correct. In a, and, a past, and past podcast. It's not that they're getting unqualified people, but they're getting a lot of very new people that don't have backgrounds in addiction. And they're like fresh out of school. Mm-hmm. You know, they have like an LPC, which is like a licensed professional counselor, an right. LSW, um, licensed social worker. Um, you know, and, and they want to help. But like I went to grad school. You don't mm-hmm. learn anything about addiction unless you want to learn about addiction. Especially, I mean, that's how my school was, and I'm sure others are very similar. Right. Right? It's, it's very general. And like they might, there might be a project due on mental health stuff, and you can pick the diagnosis. So like I did a lot of my um, diagnosis on like substance abuse disorders and things of that because nature. Because that was the, the field you were interested in. Correct. That's what I wanted to specialize in. But most people that I went to school with did not. They didn't do anything with addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, right? So now we have these folks who are coming out and, and they want to discuss childhood issues, trauma issues, family issues. And in, in a 21-day setting, it's not the place. In a 30-day setting, it's not the place. Right. That's something that would probably take maybe potentially years. Potentially, yeah. To De- definitely months. Mm-hmm. And so so my point of like bringing this up is that, you know, I think it's really sad because, you know, I think 
like good addiction treatment should be like solid education. Primarily, like if I was, if like whatever, somebody called me and said, come take over this treatment center, like the curriculum, would we really be on education on what are you doing next? What do you mean? Like, what are you doing next? Like, this is not good enough. This is 21 days. What are you going to do when you leave? Where are you going to oh, go? Oh, okay. What okay, are you going to okay, do? Okay, okay. How are you going to get there? You're talking about we, how you would gear it towards the client. Aftercare. How you, that's what we're going to do. We're going right. to motivate people. We're going to spend the entire time doing motivational interviewing and some cognitive behavioral therapy, and we're going to motivate the person to make some changes in their life and do something different. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then try to set them up for the, whatever their best chance of success looks like. Yeah. Whether it be some sort of, uh, you know, sober living home or, uh, you know, setting them up with, you know, I, I remember when I got out of treatment, all they, all they did was give me a, uh, like printed pieces of paper with like recommendations of where. In some, in some places. Yeah. yeah. It's in some places it's really, really bad. And you know, like case management isn't, uh, in all circumstances, most circumstances, it's not a reimbursable, um, it's not a reimbursable service. What do you mean reimbursable service? So like, so insurance companies pay for reimbursable services mm-hmm. and, and that's, that's it. They don't like pay for other things. So like case management is a reimbursable service. Right. Hmm. It is not. It's not. It's Did not. I just say it is? I don't know. No, DJ not. walked in and I got real thrown no, off. It's not. Um, and right, so, so like 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 so nursing it's why care case, is reimbursable service. So it's yeah. So it's also it's also why like case managers um, get overloaded with people because they don't want to hire more people because that ultimately pulls from the bottom line. Got it. Got it. Right. Got so it, got more it. people have to manage. So the insurance company is paying for the nurse to be there. Correct. It, they're paying for like the doctor visit. They're paying for the psychiatrist visit. They're paying for. Um, you know the which you would think the insurance company would want to pay for that because the the insurance companies are idiots and they they're trying they're they're managing addiction as a medical illness and it's way more than that mm-hmm. right like they pay for the like primary time with your therapist they pr- pay for your primary group your didactic group your lectures that's the stuff they pay for the insurance companies, they don't get it. They're trying, like, you also have to understand that, right? Like, if we look at addiction as a medical illness, we're just trying to manage symptoms. We're not actually trying to cure the illness. Mm-hmm. Right? The medical industry has no interest in, like, curing people's problems. By and large, no. Or we'd be, like, consistently looking at changing diets. We'd be eradicating foods uh-huh. um, and a lot of things that, like, continuously hurt us, like yogurt. Mm. Like I said this earlier today, like all yogurt is is creamy sugar. It's I don't like yogurt. Gooey. I like, I like ice cream. Same thing. I mean, ice, ice cream's, cream's great. Awesome. Yeah, but it's like gooey, <laughs> creamy sugar, uh-huh. right? Like they genetically modify the food to texture first, then add flavor after. Same with Cheez Its. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We talked Cheez-Its about that are last delicious. Time. Yeah. Fantastic. They're great. But this stuff isn't doing us any good, and uh-huh. a lot of the foods that are out there are causing medical problems. And if we were really looking at like treating actual illness, we would be looking at like eliminating and removing things that um, are severely problematic. Yeah. I mean, I I have no, uh, like not a lot of scientific knowledge of the body, but um, from stuff I've listened to and read it, I mean, a lot of stuff can be uh, prevented by diet and exercise. Stuff we eat now is crap. Absolute crap. Those pizzas were good though that we had. Michelli's. Michelli's? <laughs> Michelli. Michelli's. 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 Summer's like Point. Michelli's. Yeah, very good. Very good. They're great. Um, so better than Sal's. Hmm. Sal's all right. Sal's always screws up the order. Yeah, I hate when that happens. Um, you know that's a Dr. Bob plant. Is it? I I got one for my one year anniversary from somebody. That is the original. And my wife has been planting them. Yeah, you just and they grow like wildflowers. Wait, so what's the story behind behind the? It's at. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a Bill Wilson plant. Doctor Bob. Oh, is it? You sure? I think it's Doctor Bob plant from Doctor Bob's house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got the same one. It's great. It barely needs any water. Can you believe that? Like our plants are cousins. Yeah, it's weird. Or brothers isn't it? potentially. And, and also a little known fact: me and Ian are oh, somehow yeah. weirdly <laughs> related. What is it? Your. Your. I think my aunt's partner wife 
is yes, is married. my second cousin's husband's. Sorry, Louise, I forgot you got married. Um, my aunt's wife, Anita, so my other aunt, is cousins with my second cousin's husband. <laughs> That's crazy. That's really weird. There's no blood relation, but they we're sort of connected. I mean, I would say that's a connection. So yeah, no, definitely. So my, your, whatever. My dad's cousin. So my second cousin got married to this guy, and his cousin is Anita's, which is my aunt's wife. Right. Um, Weird. Yeah. So like they were whatever. She was watching something. Was like said to my aunt, "Hey, how do you know?" this place Surfside and she was like oh you know my nephew you know, started this company and blah, mm-hmm. blah 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 and she's like oh my god right and it <laughs> went back and forth and it's this thing really super, strange super bizarre really, really um, strange yeah so back to treatment you know like I, I don't understand why like I understand that like from a facility perspective you want to offer something different and I believe that's like really important mm-hmm. um, you want to be able to engage people as best as possible but you know, I think we as a as an industry, we need to look at like what our practices actually are because they're not working. Right. Like people aren't engaged. And when people leave, they're in worse shape than when they went in. And when I say worse shape, they're more emotionally vulnerable. Excuse me, because now they've been removed from substances for twenty something days. So now like anything that they use to like numb them emotionally is now gone. And you know, they're like incredibly vulnerable. Right. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to like, uh, you know, I'm thinking in my head, if there's any way that some of the stuff can be remedied. Um, and you know, it kind of just seems like it is what it is, you know, like it doesn't really seem like there's any, any quick sort of fix, uh, to change any of this stuff. There's not. Yeah. There's no, there's not. And, and at least not on a grand scale. No. And so like earlier today we were interviewed by uh, KYW News Radio 1060. Yeah. Um I wrote a comment to this thing about Suboxone. Oh, we were going to talk about that. Mhm. Well, we are now. We are now. Um so we wrote a comment about this thing and uh so we were interviewed and, and she was just kind of like dumbfounded, you know, because everybody portrays this idea that there are these like quick remedies and quick fixes like, oh, do the trauma track and you'll be OK. Oh, get on Suboxone and you'll be OK. Like, mm-hmm. No, like getting sober takes hard fucking work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said something to her to the effect of, yeah, like you just got to do it. You just got to go. You just got to get to the point where you can just do it. And you're willing to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. I mean, that's really uh, when you when you boil it all down. That's what it has to start with. You have to get beaten to a point of pain where you the willingness grows from that pain, and then the rest is the rest. You know, I mean, very simplistically, that's what, that that's all it is. I want to get this article. What's that? I want to get that article. Which one? The one that you wrote? No, the actual article. Who got it? Who got it? Yeah, I want to retain the crowd. Um, my name's Brian. I'm uh six foot two. 175 pounds. I uh, work for Surfside. I also, what else do I do? I listed my height and my weight. Huh? I listed my height and my weight. And he likes long walks on the beach. Yeah. But he is taking ladies. Sorry. Yeah. Me and my um, girlfriend like to take her Labrador, a very, very cute Labrador, out for walks on the beach. So here it is. Um, I can put it up in post production. I can put the article up on the screen. You can make it look fancier than this? Yeah. <laughs> I think this looks great. Um, prosecutors say the drug maker in Divior lied about popular opioid treatment. What, it, what a shocker, number one. That a pharmaceutical company lied about the medication that it is putting out. Hmm. Shocker. Um Endeavor PIC plummeted to an all-time low after U.S. I know people who hate Suboxone but have like invested into this just because they thought they were going to make money. So this is actually fantastic. Endeavor plummeted to an all-time low after U.S. prosecutors said to the U.K. drug maker deceived doctors about and its addiction treatment dangers, fueling a deadly epidemic of opioid use abuse. 
Um, basically, what they said is that like you couldn't really abuse Suboxone, the film, mm-hmm. which is like a bunch of BS. And look, let's be clear. Surfside is not against medicated assisted treatment. I am not against medicated assisted treatment. I know people who have done very, very well. Um, I've advocated for some people to get on different types of medicated assisted treatment. Um, but I also have an extensive background working with different types of medicated assisted, assisted treatment, including methadone and suboxone, where a lot of people, I think, talk about this stuff, but they don't actually have the experience mm-hmm. of like working in a methadone clinic where you're seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people day in, day out. Mm-hmm. Who were slaves to medication? That must have been a horrible job. Actually, really liked it because um, <laughs> nobody cared. Yeah, they no, just... nobody cared about anything except getting their dose in the right. big picture. Uh-huh. Just wanted to get in, get, get out. in, get out. Right, get in, get out. Out of sixty-five people on my caseload, three came off methadone over the course of three years. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I'm sure there were people on your caseload who were there before you got there. So it's not just they started at year zero to year three. Too, correct yeah i mean like a lot of a lot like of like you folks, weren't you weren't dealing with just new clients right i'm just talking, oh, trying yeah, to clarify I had, that i had one so in the three years that you on for like 40 years right so in the three years yeah. that you were there you only saw three people come off of, on my personal on your caseload. caseload i mean like a lot of people were really content like getting methadone and smoking pot right not necessarily allowed to do so um and look a lot of a lot of the folks i will say their lives on methadone were much, much better than what they were when they were doing dope. I hope so. Yeah, right? If they're not, it's a real problem. Mm-hmm. But in the big picture, like, you know, they're, they're really just trying to get in, get out. Mm-hmm. You know, not a lot of folks, like, wanted, there was a couple guys, um, you know, there were some pretty solid guys, actually, the crew and brigantine that I really liked. Um, but there was, like, you know, a bunch of AC folks, you know, there were some really good people, but like in the big picture, like the goal was not to like change your life completely. The goal was to like figure out how to get permanent disability or, you know, like, I don't know. Um, you know, so, so when I think of like Suboxone where it was initially came out as like this detox med and then all of a sudden, um, you know, it, it now turned into this like long term solution that isn't actually it's harm reduction, which is okay, but mm-hmm. it's not abstinence based recovery. Mm-hmm. And you know, the reports of people who are taking medicated medication from from not the government and not the advocates, but from the actual people who have been on medicated assisted treatment, those reports are staggeringly different than what the media portrays. Mm-hmm staggeringly different yeah i mean i know when i even read articles and people say i'm like like what yeah like what like no way yeah and it will but see you have to understand that the the like the people who who uh have made the suboxone have like infiltrated the advocates which are primarily made up of folks that have like lost loved ones Mm -hmm. um due to addiction so they've like infiltrated that group and basically said, like, oh, this would have saved your kid, which right. is not necessarily false. Right, yeah. The kid would probably still be alive, yeah. It's not necessarily a false statement. But um, it's, it's then, like, pushed onto other people. It's like, oh, this saves lives. Sure, it saves lives. But again, like, for every one person who has been successful in Suboxone, which there are, there's ten people who've taken it and then started shooting it. Right, and the doctors were saying for it's probably still are the ones who haven't read this are probably still saying that like oh you can't get high off of it it's no big deal etc mm-hmm. etc cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. when the truth is you can right and it's and it can be super dangerous mm-hmm. yeah I I almost uh I had like cold sweats one time from shooting suboxone too early like too when I say too early I mean uh the time that elapsed between my last heroin use and when I Shot up the suboxone was, it was the time frame was too close together. It was horrible. I was yeah, scared. Yeah. I had my I had my phone on nine one one. I was about to dial it. It was uh it was definitely very sketchy. And, and and the thing is is like, I guess you can get high off suboxone, but it sucks. It's like not fun. It's not like a good recreational but, drug. But people do it all the time because 
Suboxone does not treat addiction. Suboxone curbs the physical craving to use. Yeah, and the withdrawal symptoms. Correct. And it blocks the ability to get high. Right. But it does not treat the mental obsession. No, of course not. So people still want to get high. So they try to then use Suboxone to get high because they they still actually want to use. And but it's not even like a good high. Like I wouldn't, like even if I had a dope habit, I wouldn't consider when I take Suboxone after that, I'm not taking it to get high. I'm taking it to not get but sick. But it's like all that shit you order online. Right, like all these stupid drugs these people use, and like some people sniff their Wellbutrin. Like, I used to buy this stuff, DIPTMEO5, some weird ass chemical. Uh, it was horrible, uh-huh. but we would eat it, right? Because we didn't have anything else to do. Yeah, but I just mean the intent behind of when I I've used Suboxone was it was as a withdrawal medication, and then the the times when I was I was shooting it, I was just so addicted to using a needle that that was just the way I took it. Oh. <laughs> Got to let it sit in the water and let it like break Ugh. down for a while. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. Um, it's very dangerous. Don't please don't do that. It's very yeah, dangerous. It's, but it's and again, it's like right. They're they're prescribing this stuff potentially to people who don't actually want to get clean. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. All right. What's going on over there? DJ's coming back in. Yeah. Where, where was he? He's outside. You can talk. It's okay. Yeah, bring him up, bring him in front of the camera. How did you get outside? Did you cross the street? Charlie got across the street. I put him in. That's DJ, and that's uh, that's that's Sir Charles. How did you get across the street? You're not a pug. You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those different things. Uh, we got a really cool 5K coming up. If you own a business or you don't own a business and want to sponsor the event, check out Scott's, uh, Scott's Trap 5K on Facebook, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.